modules in the course. We start off with module one. And obviously, in the beginning, um, we need to get to know each other. We don't know exactly how many people will be coming on the course. It won't be more than 20. For most of the sessions, um, Roger, Kieran and myself will be there. But we also have Pretty. Give us a wave, Pretty, And also Meher Gehi who is a storyteller from Mumbai, who will be our assistant facilitators. So this is a course with a lot of hand-holding and support. Um, so, and it's really very step-by-step. Step. We, we, all of us um, feel very strongly that you have to create a very safe, very warm and supportive atmosphere, because that's when people can start to thrive and start to learn properly. Generally, what we've had in our past module, it was very international, which was which was fabulous. And there was a lot of intercultural sharing as well, which I think was a real bonus of going on a kind of a global course. <laughs> anyway, so in the first module, we're looking how story works in the brains of the audience. We are looking really at the science of storytelling here. Then what makes storytelling different from other performance arts? Because it is very different. There's a lot of, of overlaps, but there is something different as well. And how, as a storyteller, you balance being in the moment and improvising the story and preparing the story beforehand. That's very important, I think. In module two, we're going to look at the types of stories that are suitable for oral telling, because that the type of story you use does make a big difference. And then we're going to go into effective ways to learn a story, because I've been teaching storytelling for many years. I've been, I've been storytelling since 1998. And I found in the hundreds of workshops I've done, that those people who have come in with some experience sometimes have gone about it the wrong way and are sabotaging their success. So I really, I, I feel strongly that learning the way you learn a story is very important. And there are lots of different ways to go about it that suit your learning style. And then I will be doing um, something on vocal expression and vocal energy. Now, obviously, in this time, we cannot change your voice. Um, but we are going to look at a way that you can start to think about your voice. We're going to look at the different elements of vocal expression so that you can think about, OK, which one have I already, am I already very good at and which one needs a bit more work? And so therefore, you, you can focus down and know where you need to put in your effort for vocal expression, because obviously your voice and vocal expression is a big part of being an effective storyteller. Now, in this module, uh, which Kieran will be doing, it's really looking at your story that you've chosen. You, you've chosen that story for a reason. What is the reason you have chosen that story? If you know what that most important thing, the MIT of your story is for you, what has led you to choose this story? It is usually um, something about the values or something that relates to your own life. That can really, you know, help you tell that story effectively. It's really about choosing a story. And storytellers often say the story chooses you. And I think there is truth in that. And in this module, we're going to start, you know, working more seriously on preparing your chosen story. So we once you sign up uh, and, and make your payment, then we will send you the two books that um, we uh, are, are offering, which is A Feast of Stories, which is... And these are all tellable tales. They've already been written by storytellers. So they're easier to translate on the tongue, easier to tell. A Feast of Stories is, a, is stories about food from Asia. 
And the other one is royals, wise and otherwise, uh, uh, a whole gamut of stories about royalty of one type or another. And we're asking that you choose your story to work on from these two um, anthologies that we will send you. If there is another story that you feel passionately about that you really want to tell from your own culture, run it by us. The reason that we are giving you these uh, PDFs of these story uh, anthologies is that we know these are tellable. We know they're about the right length. Uh, and we want something to work for you. But in our last course, um, Fajr, who comes, who is Kuwaiti but lives in the UAA, she was, she really wanted to do something from her culture. And so she ran us through several stories that she got. And eventually we found one that would work for her and for the course. As I say, in this module, we're going to start to prepare. We'll do things like storyboarding, some visualization exercises, because it's very important that you get that story into your imagination in order to tell it effectively. And you will just tell roughly to a partner. Kieran will carry on teaching module four. There will be some presentations about telling to different types of audiences. And then you will tell your story again to the partner and we'll do an exercise that help you to imagine the details more fully. Um, so you can see, you know, that the early modules were doing more input about story theory, storytelling theory, but as the modules go on, that will continue, but there will be more time spent on learning your story. You will be mostly working with one partner, sometimes in small groups, you won't be, have to tell to the whole group. Um, and even at the end, when we do the showcase, it will be in a larger group, but it won't be so terrifying. <laughs> so in module five, um, I will take it again. Kieran's done module four, and we'll be discussing ethics for storytellers. Um, things like, you know, can I tell this story? Uh, do I have to have permission? Um, is it copyrighted? What do I do if it's copyrighted? Can I tell it? And also those, those issues of cultural sensitivity, telling stories from other people's cultures, what things do you have to think about? We're also going to look at story structure because having an understanding of the, the essential elements of story structure can help you to structure your stories uh, much more effectively. So in this course, you will be working on one story, but we will be preparing you to, you know, to work on any story and also to create your own stories. So, and again, you'll practice retelling your story with a partner. One of the things that we'll have talked about uh, in the earlier session is, uh, as Sheila said, is you know, tailoring and uh, your telling to a particular audience. Um, and particularly if when you're working with uh, young audiences, you'll be looking at how do you, um, you know, build that connection and sustain an engagement. And so making it very uh, interactive. And also, how do you use, you can work in dialogue uh, into a story. It may well be, for example, that the, the text that you've got uh, does not have much dialogue. Uh, and we'll show why dialogue is really a storyteller's friend and how you can play with that. Use what Sheila was sharing about your voice work uh, and exploring like different character voices. How do you sustain a voice all the way through what kind of uh, character voices are effective and so on. Wants to really apply these to your story and think, oh, yes, what which of the techniques that uh, we've just heard about would be appropriate, would be very useful. How could I use a chorusing or refrains or something in, in my story? Because I, I kind of came from a theatre background led me to discover uh, oral storytelling so i'm this is something that i'm i'm kind of particularly aware of is the sense of that um spatial landscape where you are in the story and your relationship um with uh or the characters in the story their relationship 
um, between each other, who's eye level, who's high, who's below, who's to one side or whatever. So this is um, something that we'll explore. How do you bring that, uh, the world of your story uh, alive on stage? The use of, of gesture and scale. We'll talk about um, physical characterization. Again, uh, it's a challenge when you're sat down. How are you going to you know, become a different uh, person? You've got a lot more choices, perhaps, when you are live or on, on uh, in a space rather than in front of a camera. This session is very about the kind of staging and the presentation of the story. The earlier parts uh, have really been thinking about what's going on you know, inside your head and your understanding of, of the story. And now it's about how we're going to try and bring it out to the audience. And in session eight, we'll consider about, yes, our openings and closings, which are probably two of the you know most important parts of a story. You need to grab your audience's attention uh, at the start. Uh, and you want to leave them. Well, not necessarily with a, a full stop. You know, you could have your question mark or an exclamation mark or even a dot, dot, dot. What are the storytelling equivalents? We'll be thinking about how, what is going to work best for your story. Okay. We've taken you through uh, all this. We've shared a lot of things. Um, and what you're going to be doing in session nine is to rehearse in small groups. You practice, share... Uh, and get some um, feedback, uh, both from us and from the other members of uh, the group. That's why we're particularly glad to have um, Pretty and Mehe in as well, because it gives us more experienced voices, different perspectives to help to kind of uh, give you that. To prepare you for uh, the final session, the 10th session, uh, which is the showcase. I think it's best if we hear from Oshima, who was part of the journey with us last year. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience, Oshima? It's good. Uh, I I have learned, I uh, my initiation was Kiran Shah. <laughs> I had her like mentorship program and I she was my mentor. And okay, and I have a little bit of experience and I have been joining learning capsules a lot. So I have had small uh, bits of everything. <laughs> but, you know, here you can learn it like structured. And uh, so those uh, fractures <laughs> uh, can be more uh, organized in me. That's one thing. And the other thing is you have to meet once a week. So <laughs> if you are lazy, it's good. You, you are <laughs> like regularly have to learn and practice. And that was very good for me because I, I get busy and I sometimes forget. Um, but here you can't forget. And so some, some assignments are, uh, said that is good. Um, like after the classes, you have to write the uh, doesn't have to be a big one, but you each time you have to write comments, and also that can organize my thought. And also, I can read other people's comments, and that you know that really helps you to understand what we are working on and what my problems, my tendency, and the stuff. And you have a performance at the end. So it doesn't have to be a good one. You have to be, you can be good, of course, but it's like warm and a safe environment to um, have another chance of performance. That's good. And you get certificate. That's good. 